If you want to get that A star at A level physics, you're going to need to be fluent in physics. I keep saying that, so here are some more tips on how you can do that. Okay, I've got four, but then I've got one more kind of B afterwards, if you like, four B afterwards. <laughs> So uh, here's the first one. So you need to be working always at a very high taxonomy. So not a lot of marks in A-level just for remembering stuff or just for explaining stuff. It's always starting from that kind of applying skill, analysis, concluding, evaluating, and really creative skills. And science is a creative subject. So my best way to work through that taxonomy and make sure you're always working at the highest level possible is to actually conduct and write up experiments in full not just the core practicals or the required practicals, the PAGs that you need to do for your exam board, although they are important. But with my students, I try and spend as much time doing experiments as possible, and I try and work through those skills, work from theory to planning to conducting, gathering the data and analysing it, concluding, evaluating, and thinking, well, what's next? What else could we do? What other practical could we do? What other experimentation, what other theories could we make? from our practical data and if you do that you're going to work through those skill levels quite consistently and keep revisiting the theory and the experiment and understand how they're really linked because science is experiments science is doing experiments to improve our knowledge and understanding of the universe okay number two um, practice manipulating algebra there's no excuse for not knowing your formula sheet off by heart i don't mean knowing every single formula but i mean knowing what they're used for, knowing what all the algebra means so that you can do as well as possible, you can be as quick as possible at applying it in the exam. So my tip for doing that is to have yourself one main copy that lives at the front of your folder and it comes out in every single lesson and you're annotating it as you go and you're working with the textbooks. If there's a way in which those uh, equations are being used multiple times then make a little note, this is useful for doing this, this is useful for doing this. Or if there's a bit of algebra that you forget what it means, then annotate it. Or some units that you forget what it means, then annotate it on that equation sheet. And by using that equation sheet loads and loads of times, that extra stuff is going to seep into your deeper knowledge. Importantly as well, there are lots of exam questions that use derivation of new formula. So deriving a new formula is taking two formula and putting them together to make something new. And if there's a common derivation that keeps coming up in exam questions or textbook questions, then note that derivation down and you won't have to do it fresh in the exam. Okay, number three is actually being able to write in words what the algebra says. There are a lot of questions that are written questions, but the answers are actually part of the equations, part of the formulas that you have there. So can you express principles and laws in both algebra and in words? So it's fine to say there's Faraday's law, but can you state that the EMF is proportional to a rate of change of flux linkage? In fact, most definition and explanation questions, they come from using one of those laws of just putting into words. Here's the fourth one then, you need to know the physics that matters. When examiners are writing exam questions, they've usually got one of these things in mind. They've got an equation, they're just probing your knowledge and use of an equation, fine. They've got something proportional to something else, they've got that Newtonian idea of proportionality, straight line graph through the origin, they've got that in mind. Can you do that? They've got first principles, those kind of key bits, often in boxes in the textbook, and the most important kind of definitions and principles in physics. They've got a law, a physical law, something that is repeated time and time again, borne out in the experiment time and time again. And really the answer is gonna be, do you know that is a law? And that's a really important thing. They've got an experiment, either a historical one or one that you've done or one that you maybe make up in mind. That's a really important one. They've got a derivation. We're getting to harder skills now. We have to use multiple things to come up with something new. They've got a derivation that they're targeting. They've got something which is fundamental, some fundamental law, principle, or particle, or uh, concept to do with the universe. They've got something fundamental in mind, and they're trying to find out, do you know that, and know how important that is? And they've got unification, so they've got ideas that are completely disparate, but they're actually linked together in this one context. They've got two things, or more things, which seem separate, but actually are the same. That is one of the most important things in physics, which we are aiming for, is unification. 
Okay, so that's my four main things that you need to be doing to make sure that you're fluent in physics. But here's an extra one, and here's something which I think that all A-star pupils have in common. Um, they are very, very interested, and they are very, very motivated. So I'm sorry if that kind of means that you're not one of these people, but I've never met somebody who gets an A-star in physics who is not hugely interested, fascinated in fact by physics, and hugely motivated to get that top grade. So if it's not you, you're probably not gonna get that A star. You might do pretty well, and it might be a ticket to go on to whatever you wanna do next, which is fine, great, glad to have you, glad, glad to help you out with your physics. But if you want that A star, it's gotta be one of your main kind of passions. So really read around the subject, and in that way, you get used to what's kind of current, what's important, what's in physicists' minds right now. What's in the minds of the people who are writing the exams? If you get yourself a uh, physics world or something, one of the physics education magazines aimed at A-level students, and that's the kind of stuff that's going to be in the examiners' minds when they're writing the questions. So it won't be a brand new context for you, it'll be something that you're already used to. And no, not only that, if you read around and you use a lot of interesting um, materials in physics, you read a lot of books, you look at a lot of blogs and web pages and uh, videos about physics, then you're going to get used to applying those principles, those first ideas, those key ideas that you've got to the wider physics context. And by doing that, you'll be fluent. If you're reading at a higher level, then you're always going to be working at this high level. Remember, physics is amazing. We're trying to explain the very, very smallest things, the fundamental things, and the very, very largest thing. We're working from the Higgs boson at 10 to the minus 20 meters and we're working to the universe at 10 to the, oh, we don't even know, meters. Thanks a lot for watching Gorilla Physics, I'm Kit Bats Masters, and I'm all about your understanding physics more so you enjoy it more, so you get more confident, so you'll be better in those exams. Maybe you've got a tip for the way that you like to revise in physics, put it down in the comments and help other people out as well, and I'm interested to find out new things as well. A lot of these videos do come from people asking questions, so why not? If you've got a question, stick it down in the comments.